So let me tell you where I stand. I am for love. I am for love. Let me say it again. I'm for love and love alone. What is love? Love is a commitment of the will to the true good of the other person. An enduring commitment of the will to the true good of the other person. I'm for it. I oppose the seductions of everything that is opposed to love, including the glamours of the innumerable kinds of non-love in our culture which deceptively speak in love's name. Midnight. Shelley's getting herself drunk so that she can get her, bring herself to go home with the strange man seated next to her at the bar. One o'clock, Stephen is busy downloading pornographic images of children from internet bulletin boards. Two o'clock, Marjorie, who used to spend every Friday night in bed with a different man, has been binging and purging since 11. Three o'clock, Peter stares through the darkness at his ceiling, wondering how to convince his girlfriend to have an abortion. Four o'clock, Lisa's in the bathroom, cutting herself delicately but compulsively with a razor. She isn't trying to kill herself. She doesn't understand why she does it. She does it often. Five o'clock, Ruth is emailing to her friend, and this is from a real letter. I have suddenly become sexually brazen. It scares me a little. I think that it's about time that I stop giving myself guilt trips about it, but the people I meet end up leaving. I can't help but feel that some or a lot of this is a little empty. This isn't what my own generation expected when, God forgive us, we invented the sexual revolution. The game isn't fun anymore. Even some of the die-hard proponents of this enslaving liberation have begun to show signs of fatigue and confusion. Naomi Wolf in a book that she wrote entitled, appropriately, Promiscuities, reports that when she lost her own virginity at age 15, there was, her words, something important missing. Reading between the lines of her account, though, the thing that was missing seems to me, seems to be the very sense that anything could be important about it. Women show signs of avoidance, too, but in a more conflicted way, I think. 83%, that's a really high percentage, you know, in a lot of sociological surveys, you don't get numbers like that. 83% of college women today, mind you, today, say that marriage is a very important goal for them. And yet 40% of them hook up, as the expression has it. They have sex without any expect expectation of relationship whatsoever. Do you hear a little cognitive dissonance there? Can you think of a sexual behavior that is less likely to get you into marriage than hooking up? What are the sexual powers for? Why not say that the meaning and purpose of the sexual powers is pleasure? You know, it's a funny thing. If I ask my uh, students, what's the purpose of the thumb? They'll say, well, um, to grasp or to oppose the fingers so that you can grasp. If I say, what's the purpose of the um, you know, what's the purpose of the ingestive powers? They, they'll say, well, nutrition. What's the, purpose of, uh, what's the purpose of the heart? They'll say to pump blood. If I say, what's the, but, but if I don't ask those questions first and I start with sex and I say, what's the purpose of the sexual powers? They'll say pleasure. Well, you know, all those other things are pleasurable too. <laughs> Have you noticed that? It's pleasurable to take a deep breath. <sighs> That felt pretty good. <laughs> uh, I hope I didn't embarrass you breathing in public. Uh, <laughs> what this shows is that pleasure isn't the purpose. If it were the purpose, it would tell us when it was good to exercise this power and when it isn't. No, it doesn't. It's just like a grace note that comes when we're exercising the, the power. You know, I used to read in the biology books when I was a kid in my school, uh, my elementary school, my high school, they would talk about the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system as though he had one and she had one but they were different, that's nonsense. Neither, neither sex has a complete rep reproductive system. Each sex has only half a reproductive system and they have different halves. 
The union of complementary opposites is the only possible realization of their procreative potential, unless they come together as one flesh, as a single organism for purposes of procreation, although with two personalities. Procreation doesn't occur. 